Please join me in salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the February 5th, 2018 Board of Selectmen's meeting. We will start with uh, public comment. Anybody wishing to make public comment? Seeing none, we'll move on to announcements and community calendar. Regina? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to thank everyone that came on Saturday. We had a semi-okay turnout, but I think the information is getting out of there and anyone's questions can get answered, which is good. But I want to say that I'm disappointed because I know Selectman Bean and I and Representative Cushing and Mindy Mesmer were supposed to attend a city council's meeting tonight and Coakley Landfill Group was going to be there to make a presentation and then they were going to open it up for public questions and that has gotten canceled at last minute. I found out a couple hours ago that they were closing it off to the public. So I just wanted to let you know that I find that very disappointing. They were supposed to be letting us know what's going on, what their thoughts are on the Coakley Landfill and at last minute they canceled and closed that off. So I am here tonight. Rusty. Um, the, ditto what she said about the uh, town meeting. We actually get out of uh, the deliberative session. We get out of there about 2.15, 2.30. Uh, it was not a great turnout, but there was some great dialogue. And uh, again, I want to thank uh, Representative Barnes and you know, Selectman Barnes and Selectman Bean for continuing to work on the water problem. Thank you. Mr. Griffin. Yeah, actually, it was the lowest turnout I've seen in 15 years. So it was kind of disappointing. Um, and I don't know what that means um, about maybe because there was nothing like the school, but there was the <coughs> wastewater treatment plant. And I think that people really need to take a look because we have some crazy art. Uh, citizens petitions that are in here and people should be taking a look at them so they can make sure to vote many of them down thank you thank you mr chairman i, I do notice that the uh, post deliberative session is under new business i know that we can have some time to talk about that uh, it's good to see you all uh and um I, I know the board wants to say um uh, best wishes to um, Joan Rice and Fred Rice and uh, say hi to them. We look forward to both of them being out and around town soon and uh, the board all says hi to them as well as those town staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'd like to also say that the deliberative session, there was a lot of good information. It could have been more people there for sure. Um, and it is posted on the town website, most of the information, and also in the No Hampton keeps posting about the different Warren articles. Yeah. So the information's out there. If you want to get it, you should look and find it and read it. And what Mr. Griffin said is absolutely important. Consent agenda, nothing? Nothing. Nothing. Appointments, Chief Ayotte and Deputy Chief Kennedy, Fire Department quarterly report. We'll be right along, yes sir. Good evening. I emailed the report to you. I hope that you all received that. I had emailed that last week. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and to the board members for allowing us to come and speak with you this evening. Uh, the deputy and I are proud to talk about the happenings at Hampton Fire Rescue. Um, tonight we'll summarize 2017 and let you know what the department has been doing in the first days of 2018. <clears throat> Hampton Fire Rescue was very fortunate in 2017 to fulfill all open positions. Fully staffed, we're also very fortunate to not have suffered any long-term injuries this past year. Since our last visit, we've purchased a 2,000 Pierce engine pumper. Deputy Kennedy has been working to make this vehicle ready for deployment. In general, this is a good rig. It has required some special attention, especially the transmission. It is, after all, an 18-year-old vehicle. But it pumps exceptionally well, and the groups have been training on it in the last three weeks. The 2002 Smeal HME pumper, formerly known as Engine 2, was purchased in September by Hampton, New York, Volunteer Fire Department, where they uh, told us she's going to live out her last days doing approximately 400 calls a year. So, When we were here in September, we had come off a rather light summer, reflected by a 9% de decrease in call volume. The gap has narrowed significantly since then. Through the fall and early winter, we answered a great many calls for service. 
comparing 2017 to 2016, the difference narrowed to 2%. Based on the parallel comparison of how the summer season affected all of the local businesses, I believe this demonstrates a relative increase in calls for service for our community. Despite the difference attributed to summer, which was definitely weather-related, we saw that throughout the year, our call volume equalized. Hampton as a community is becoming a busier place to work and live. We answered a total of 4,424 calls for service in 2017. <clears throat> the breakdown is as follows. 2,165 calls for fire and 2,259 calls uh, as patient contacts. The historical comparison, I provided a chart. I know that folks at home can't see that, but we are approximately um, equal for the last three years. Uh, we had been seeing a normal rise, and this continues. On the fire side of the house, we responded to a total of 20 structure fires in town. The most significant fire occurred in February in a single-story ranch-style home where we lost five dogs as a result of smoke and oil. We extinguished a fire in the commercial structure located at 725 Lafayette Road. Quick work by our on-duty crew prevented the entire structure from, from becoming involved. I don't, I don't know. Oh, what. echo. Turn I that think down. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that fixes it. Several businesses were affected, but the, burnt, uh, the brunt of the damage was borne by Seacoast Coin and Jewelry. <laughs> this is pretty neat. This is like being yeah, a Fenway. <laughs> yeah. right. Hitting first up. Uh, several of the businesses located in the plaza required significant cleanup from the smoke, but they were open uh, a short time later. We responded to a great many mutual aid fires in 2017. A general alarm fire in Portsmouth at the State Street Saloon, Catalanos and Browns in Seabrook, and a fatal fire in Northampton are only a few that the, crowd, uh, the crews responded to and performed with expertise and professionalism. During the last week of 2017 and through the new year, we responded to several fires in other communities and a small fire in Hampton. Unfortunately, the fire in, one fire in Seabrook was also another fatal fire where an elderly woman perished. Anecdotally, and these fires are still under investigation, but some of the fires we responded to were attributed to alternate um, home heating methods. So this is a good time to pause for a public service announcement and ask that everyone keep all of their combustible materials far from the electrical and gas heating appliances. In January, uh, we saw a very busy month for the fire side of the house. Mother Nature came calling with a short but powerful blizzard on January 4th, which caused Hampton Fire Rescue to perform several calls for rescue. Fourteen residents were assisted from their homes, four of them over ladders, to warming stations, as exceptionally high tides and storm surge brought water into their homes and knocked out power and utilities. We rescued ten drivers of motor vehicles that had become submerged in several feet of water standing on the roadways. In total, we responded to 34 calls in one and a half days. Following these rescue and fire calls in the harsh weather conditions, we did our best to clean the apparatus. We used pressure washers to clean the undercarriage and the exterior of the vehicles. However, the high water seems to have caused a slew of electrical problems that we're working to resolve. The ladder truck is currently being serviced in Walpole and Engine 4 will be next. And we'll, we feel this is directly attributed to the exposure to salt water and slush during that storm. We'll keep you informed of the status of the repairs as we move forward. Just before sunrise on January 17th, crews responded to a fire in a duplex on Johnson Ave. No firefighter injuries and no residential injury, uh, no occupant injuries. However, a pet snake was lost during that fire. Fire calls are up uh, in 2018 by 37% compared to 2017 uh, in January for the same time frame. <clears throat> Tomorrow and Wednesday, our ice rescue training will be taking place. Uh, we will be having five members trained to deliver the class to the remaining members of the organization. We call this Train the Trainer. This class will be delivered by Ocean Rescue Systems Incorporated, and it's the same company that has trained all of our providers as rescue swimmers for open water and rescue boat operators. May we never need to use this training. <coughs> On the emergency medical services side, we had a total of 2,259 patient contacts in 2017. There were 1,444 patient transports. Of these calls for service, 52 were for overdose. Hampton Fire Rescue has administered Narcan a total of 73 times, which has uh, included several patients that required multiple doses. Opiates remain a great concern. The New Hampshire Drug Monitoring Initiative has published a document that indicates that there were 395 deaths attributed to overdose in 2017, but 91 of these remain under investigation for toxicology, and we anticipate that number to rise. As it stands right now, in a race that nobody wants to win, Hampton is approximately average by comparison. There are three other communities and, and counties that are significantly higher, um, but this is, again, a race that nobody wants to win. 
Comparing January numbers from 2018 to 2017, we find that our call volume is up by 20% on the EMS side, with 189 calls uh, over last year's 157. The new year still demonstrates an opiate problem with seven overdoses suspected, an increase of 133% over last year. And as you would expect, Narcan has been administered a uh, 43% increase. Sadly, this year alone in January of 2013, uh, 2018, we've seen three fatalities. EMS Officer Denio has brought a new type of training to the department last month. In order to better understand the resources that exist for people who face addiction uh, and to learn about treatment options, he brought in two staff members from Safe Harbor in Portsmouth. Both are experienced educators and have experience with addiction and recovery. Their perspective is quite eye-opening, and after the first day, we thought it necessary, and we invited the Hampton Police Department to join, which they've taken up um, readily. It's being accepted very well by all crews. We're exceptionally pleased to report that more than 435 people have been trained in cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR, in 2017, and we continue to train the community and students at WHS. It's our goal, again, to complete the entire uh, senior class. We continue to work with the Hampton Police Department to prepare for the deployment of EMS in the warm zone. The next phase of this training will be a full-scale exercise and anticipate seeing this in early spring. Again, may we never need this training. With the assistance of the town manager and this board, we executed a purchase order in, uh, for a new ambulance in December. We anticipate delivery in May. The power load system was purchased and was delivered to headquarters and is awaiting installation into the new rig. The Fire Prevention Bureau for, uh, performed 231 inspections, issued 186 permits, and collected $18,253.60 in fees in 2017. There is a table provided for year-over-year -year comparison. Uh, we're currently under last year's, uh, we're right at last year's uh, numbers. We're very close. Um, the construction phase, and I know that if you've seen Kevin from building, he's telling you that how busy he is, and we are as well. What we're not seeing is the large-scale projects that have already come to town, 128 Ashworth, 180 Ashworth, uh, Cornerstone, Spring Hill Estates. For us, that's a larger, a larger fee base when they come in as a large project. In January, the Fire Prevention Bureau conducted 12 inspections, issued 10 permits, and collected $688.50 in fees. In 2017, there were 15 uh, display fireworks inspections. Our New Year's Eve display was canceled due to weather. Local hotels and motels continue to partner with Hampton Fire in conducting life safety inspections and making sure that their systems are inspected and functioning. During Fire Prevention Week in October, the Fire Prevention Bureau brought a message of safety in the home to an unprecedented 672 students from local schools and several homeschool students. The Penguin Punch um, preparations took place last week, and our fire prevention officer, as well as the deputy, were integral in that. And uh, it's my understanding, because you were there, deputy, that oh, yeah. they went off without a hitch. Yep. Great. Um, good crowd this year, too. Communications side of the house, Hampton Fire Alarm answered 24,903 phone calls in 2017. This translates to an average of approximately 68 calls per day. During an extreme windstorm in October, they answered 276 calls in two and a half days. They answered 193 calls in 36 hours during the blizzard at the beginning of the month. There were 2,261 phone calls to Hampton Fire Alarm in January of 2018, or a 22% increase over the 1,854 <coughs> calls in 2017, same time period. For the administrative side of the house, Hampton Fire Rescue has submitted for a FEMA Assistance to Firefighters grant for the replacement of obsolete radios and um, equipment and pagers. They're, these are all 16 years old. This is the same equipment requested in last year's AFG with a modification of pagers added to the, instead of the, and the portable radios removed. This grant was initially supposed to be opened in August, but was continu continually delayed due to the FEMA response to the areas affected by uh, severe weather in the southern regions, all of the hurricanes. The funding opportunity opened about three weeks ago and closed on February 2nd. The total request was for $68,950. We're grateful to the board for their foresight and inclusion of the AFG grant and the block acceptance you perform annually. Our computer-aided dispatch and record-keeping software, are also known as IMC, was inaccessible to headquarters station for two weeks due to hardware failure. Um, this occurred as a result of exposure to the elements. We used two microwave towers, uh, one located at headquarters, one down at the police station antenna, and they communicate directly. Both microwave transmitters were replaced and uh, were able to enter data once again. But we were very grateful to Seabrook Fire for their assistance. They, they lent us their new ladder truck, towel ladder, to, um, for a portion of the day as ours was down for service with electrical problems. The backlog 
from those two weeks has taken several days to enter. We did hire fire alarm operators in to perform the call entry down at the beach station, which caused some unanticipated overtime but was necessary to avoid losing that data. We're hopeful that the community votes in the affirmative to allow the purchase of the new software with an information technology warrant article on this ballot uh, this year. We're seeking to replace the antiquated software with modern software that is able to properly be queried and used to generate reports. It will be used for our computer-aided dispatch and site file storage as well. It will be hosted in the cloud, which will reduce the reliance on microwave technology for report writing. And if you will notice in the uh, documents that I passed out just now, you'll see a discrepancy in calls for fire service. At the beginning of the month, the report ran with 2,165 calls. Currently, it's running with 2,157. Somewhere, eight calls get dropped. That is a known glitch in the system. It's a gremlin, if you will, in the system with IMC, and it may be as a result of some of the data that might be lost due to transmission. Thank you very much for your consideration. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your report, Chief and Deputy Chief. I don't have any questions. I just wanted to say thank you and the first responders for that day. I wasn't here, but I saw the video acrylics and the trucks going through the water and you guys out there taking people out of their houses. So it's just good to know that Hampton can always depend on its fire and police departments. <coughs> Man, thank Thanks. You. Thank you. <clears throat> how many times are we going over to the, the, the new Seabrook ER? Do we, uh, are, we, are we utilizing that? We are. Um, initially, yeah. obviously, that, that came on board January, uh, June 1st, I'm sorry, of 2017. We saw a steady increase, and uh, it accounts for approximately 20% of our call volume right now to be transported to that location. So I tell you, that, that, that obviously, it's less time to go over there, I would think, wouldn't it be? It is, yeah. and it's a, it's a great turnaround as well. Uh, we see our crews returning quicker. Um, we're still spending about 51% of our transports are going to Exeter. The remainder is going to Portsmouth Regional, um, about 30, 31%, and then 20% to Seabrook. I took, I took my wife over there the other day, and it's quite a facility over there, what mm. they have over there, compared to what we've had in the past. It's an excellent facility. So. It really is, and they have all the capabilities. Yeah, yeah they do. They yeah. do. I, it, it was really good, so it's good to see we're utilizing it. Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Griffin. No, good report. Thank Thanks, you. Sir. Mr. Bean. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chief, Deputy Chief. Uh, collective bargaining units, you've got uh, a, a unit that's up on the ballot. Uh, we do. Uh, you please share your enthusiasm uh, and uh, advocate for that raise. I certainly would, and I thank you very much for the opportunity. <coughs> so Local 3017 represents our uh, supervisory unit, and that includes the four captains, the four lieutenants, the deputy chief, um, two department secretaries, the MS officer, and the fire prevention officer. They're the ones who are on duty every day. Um, the <coughs> captains and lieutenants, they, they're responsible for the safety of their crews. They're responsible for supervision of all of their day-to-day -day activities. Uh, they're also the ones that are showing up at your house. And they're responsible for customer service. I think they do a tremendous job, and they have been working hard um, at maintaining professionalism throughout. The deputy chief was the former president and is happy to have relinquished those duties now. Taking that but if you'd like off. To certainly, yeah, no, <laughs> if you'd like to talk a little bit on that, by all means. No, they're just a bunch of uh, really hardworking guys that um, I'm very proud to call my brothers, uh, to support them wholeheartedly. Um, and I'm hoping that this uh, my hometown of Hampton will support them as well and get out there and vote for their contracts. Thank you. And, and I know the board shares that enthusiasm and those accolades. And I would say that uh, on a, a day to day basis, there's 15,000 people that they are responsible for for life safety. In the summertime, that is upwards of 100,000 people. And there uh, is literally billions and billions of property uh, at risk that um, you stand ready to uh, um, protect. Uh, in, a, in a moment's notice, so thank you for that. Shifting gears, um, we met with Aquarian this morning briefly. We've had this discussion before, but I would request um, uh, on behalf of the board, Mr. Chairman and Chief, uh, your exact cost for what, it, uh, what it's costing to include uh, rolling stock uh, to shovel out the hydrants that are the property of Aquarian. And if you could get that to the town manager, that would be great. Thank you, gentlemen, for your service. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Thank you. Uh, and a couple questions. Number one, you said you had no serious injuries this year. Correct. Right. So and that's most likely attributed to the training that you're doing and the equipment that you're purchasing. That's absolutely accurate. So I think that it, it one, um, we, you also have to take into account the, the whole scope of it. So first, we were very fortunate. Captain Cutting had done some research and brought in a, a group of people to do some lifting training. 
and these people were body mechanics experts. Um, that was late 2016. They came in, they spoke to all four groups, spoke about how to properly lift, and we saw, uh, I think that we're seeing that pay dividends now. Um, we use the power load system daily, which we were present to ask you for uh, last time we were here, and that power load system does the lifting into the back of the ambulance, which was attributing to a lot of back and shoulder injuries for us. Um, now we'll have two ambulances equipped when this new one arrives. I believe that that has a, a lot to do with it. And we have to look at the fact that last winter, uh, for what it's worth, was not a tremendously difficult winter. We didn't have the feet of snow that we had the winter previous to that. So whether it was a shoveling injury and or carrying down somebody from the stairs and having, you know, coming out on snow, um, I think there was a lot of factors that go into it, but I certainly think that the risk management approach that we're taking is starting to pay dividends. Yeah, I think that's important. I think it's important for people to realize that when the fire department comes in or the police department comes in asking for money for training, that the payoff, the return on the investment is huge. Absolutely. But because it's much more expensive to have somebody out than it is to have everything to do with proper sure. training. Sure, and the, and the incalculable cost of somebody who's out injured and not, not able to do not only their job, but family functions. You know, if you're laid up, and I think that Mr. Bridal is most recently the one out of the board who's been laid up the longest, you know how hard it is. If you're hurt, you're unable to do anything even at home. So that is something that we can't even attribute a cost to. Um, when we start to think about how much it costs to backfill and cover overtime, it's exceptionally expensive. I have one other question. Is yes, Marine One functional in the winter? In yes, the absolutely. Yes. And do you ever get calls in the winter? And Typically less, uh, significantly less. There's less people using the water. Yeah, right. Um, but it's not unheard of, and I do believe that we had one. In the last six weeks, I do believe that Marine One has gone on a call. Um, we do anticipate, and I know that we executed at the end of the year, a purchase order for the, the starboard side engine of Marine One. Um, the vendor that we use takes the month of January off as their vendors to, they're also dealing with boat shows. We anticipate that come middle of February, they're going to be taking that water, uh, taking it out of the water, bringing it down to their facility and installing that motor. Very good. Thank you very much for your Absolutely. Support. You guys do a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Nothing further? Nothing. Right. Thanks, guys. Thank Have you. a great night. Thank you. All right, Chief. Good night, Exo. Uh, approval of minutes, January 22nd, 2018. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Okay. Motion seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. Town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I just want to thank everyone who attended the delivery session for 2018 at our, our annual meeting this past Saturday. It was a, a memorable occasion. Uh, the annual town election and meeting will take place on Tuesday, March 13th. When it kind of high school, polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Those who cannot attend should request an absentee ballot from the town clerk's office. Please contact that office if you have any questions. Persons who may be eligible for tax exemptions for the elderly, veterans, blind, or other special categories must contact the assessor's office by April 15, 2018. Please inquire as early as you can because additional information sometimes needs to be obtained and filed on time. Property owners within the Hampton Beach precinct who wish to file a precinct tax exemption must contact the assessor's office and fill out the proper forms by April 15, 2018. Property owners who wish to file for a tax abatement must do so by March 1, 2018. Those dates are statutory dates, so they can't, they have to, your filing has to be in by that, that time. Mr. Chairman, the uh, selectman had me send a list out to each of you regarding possible individuals who could be named as uh, in the dedication of the town report. Uh, I have all those here, of course, so I can hand them out if you want. Yeah. Okay. And pass these around. Oh, okay. <laughs> We've all looked at this, I imagine. Yes, and the four gentlemen that are on there, I, I think they all have served this community and this country well over the years, and uh, I think we ought to make it for all four of them. I'll second that. I agree. Okay. Uh, I would Discussion. include the names Jerry Dignam, Colonel Lassard, uh Jerry McConnell, Art Moody, did I skip anybody? You got all? That's the four. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Unanimous. Very good. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Questions for the town manager? Regina? 
Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As far as uh, letting the town clerk know about absentee, can they do that online, or do they have to write a? Can they write a letter or do it online? I if don't have, have that information. Okay. I, I haven't asked the town clerk yet, and yeah. things keep on changing. As I know, you know if somebody's out of town and still yeah. wants to vote, they yeah. should, I would hope there's a way that they can uh, call or write in so that they can, they're able to get a lot. I'll have more information by next week when she's not busy trying to do the uh, the ballot and the uh, other information okay. Thank she's you. trying to get through. Rick? Thank you. Negative, sir. And I would imagine that that information on the absentee is on the website. It could very well be. Could be yes. Could but, well, yeah. very well I would be check on, maybe on, on New Hampshire uh, Secretary of State would be there so people could find the information there. Okay, good. Old business. Vote pursuant to RSA 41-14-A, Proceedings for 109-111 Kings Highway Tax Map 197, Lot 18. Three provisions of the deed from the town for which relief is requested are in paragraph 4, specifically the one single family dwelling unit, the no subdivision restriction, and the seven foot setback requirements. There are two dwellings on the lot that have been in existence since 1945 and 1955, respectively, which are proposed to be placed under condominium form of ownership and fewer than seven feet from the lot lines. <coughs> Are we doing comment on this tonight, or are we just voting? No, on this? this is a voting night, sir. This is a voting this night, vote, so it's, the it's applicant is here. So yeah, if okay. You wanted to have the applicant heard. I don't think they were present at the last two. Yeah, yeah. we were not. Okay. okay is there a motion, Mr. Chairman, to uh, um, allow this? Yeah. Is there a prepared motion? Could you say, it, Mark, please? Uh, the board would, in fact, if the board wished, to uh, authorize the release of the deed restriction as to the uh, no subdivision and alter the one single family dwelling unit to allow two single family dwelling units and also with regard to the setbacks to uh, re uh, delete the seven foot from the any boundary line requirement and substitute for that. The grantee <coughs> will not erect any buildings upon the premises within the setbacks prescribed in the Hampton Zoning Ordinance, except to the extent allowed by the Hampton Zoning Board of Adjustment by variance once said variance becomes final. So okay. moved. So moved. Discussion on this? I'll second it. Okay, discussion? Do you wish to say anything? No. No? I'm ready to vote. Mr. Okay. Chairman. All in favor? Opposed? I abstain. Abstain. One abstention. So three in favor. Uh, none opposed. One abstention. Fine. Great. That's good. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> vote pursuant to RSA 41 colon 14 dash A proceedings for 871 Ocean Boulevard tax map 183 lot 17. Remove the single family deed restriction. Do you have anything on this one? I believe the uh, attorney for the applicant, Attorney Phoenix, is here and the applicant. Yeah. Um, I uh, had indicated to the board that there might potentially be two other uh, deed restrictions that, depending on the applicant's desires, might need to be released. But I communicated that to Attorney Phoenix, and I think he has some answers for that. Uh, yes, thank you, Mark, and uh, uh, members of the board. Tim Phoenix, I'm here with Fred, uh, Dr. Fred Erig, um, who's my client and a personal friend. Um, uh, Mark had the Curtis made a courtesy call to me today, which I appreciate, to discuss the specific nature of the deed restrictions in um, in paragraph four of the deed. Um, those include um, that there can only be one single family dwelling, uh, no more than four bedrooms. Um, and no, no commercial use, which is fine, uh, no subdivision, and no buildings within seven feet of the lot line. Um, when, when we were here last time, I neglected to um, inform the board, uh, and I, based on Mark's call, I found this corrective deed that was issued in 19... I think there's enough for everybody here. Thanks. Um, issued in 1996 that changed um, the seven-foot requirement and limited it to 
um, the buildings as they existed on the plans uh, that were done in 19... Uh, 96 uh, for Mr. Caragianis. Uh, the problem was that the, the building was on, at one, uh, on one side six and a half feet from the lot line. The deed restriction was seven, so the then Board of Selectmen corrected that by issuing a corrective deed that changed it, so the six and a half feet is fine. Uh, I didn't give the no subdivision uh, issue much thought when I made my request um, because we're not subdividing the lot. Uh, Mark was kind enough to advise me today that even if we're not uh, subdividing the lot, we may at some point, uh, Mr. Eric, Dr. Eric, or someone else might want to kind of minimize, which would be a subdivision. Um, so we have not requested that. I'll discuss it with Dr. Eric, and we haven't asked for it, so I don't think it's fair to ask the board to, to amend to include that because it was not included. What I do ask the board to do is lift the uh, restriction to the sink to, to one family because it is a two family and to the best of our knowledge it's been two families for approximately 30 years as best we can tell. Um, doc, uh, Mr. Caragianis was issued a building permit back in the in approximately 84, 85 just before it was needed to him to put a second story on. Um, later on there was another building permit issued that Mark brought to my attention at the last meeting a few weeks ago and uh, which noted there was some work being done and noted turn it back into a single family. Well, nobody ever followed up on that, so the two-family was built. He came along in 2013 and bought it. It is a two-family. I've given you the explanation in the previous meetings. Um, I've pointed out that there's, we've counted so far approximately 20 uh, properties between, what, I think, 1st or 3rd and 20th Street that are multifamily, and we've looked at the records, and most of them, don't say how they ever got that way. Um, they may have been granted variances, maybe not, maybe the records are missing because some of them have been that way a long time. But we think we fit um, the right description. We think we should be able to uh, go forward with a legal uh, two-family uh, per the deed right now. And then one little minor thing is that um, the deed restriction also says only four bedrooms. I showed you the plans last time. I can show you them again. Um, I was worried about there being five bedrooms. One of them doesn't have a closet, but I decided I'd ask you folks to lift the, that restriction as well to the extent it's considered a bedroom. He's not going to put a closet in it, but I thought I'd be safe. Unless you have questions, we just ask for your positive <coughs> vote. Mr. Chairman, could, could the uh, town attorney incorporating the two family and the uh, additional bedroom request form the motion? Uh, yes, the motion would be to uh, modify the one single family deed restriction to allow for a uh, two family and also to um, uh, modify the uh, deed restriction that indicates containing no more than four bedrooms uh, to allow uh, no more than five bedrooms. Thank you. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. You. Uh, point of order, do I just coordinate with Mark getting something that's in a recordable fashion, I assume? Correct. Okay. Uh, subsequently, uh, once I know what the board does, I draft something that would uh, um, memorialize their <coughs> vote that's suitable for the reg for recording okay. the registry. Uh, but I'm happy to run it by you so that it'll accomplish All right. what you well, expect. Thank you, and thank you again for the call today. It was helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Vote pursuant to RSA 41 colon 14 dash A proceedings for 1088 Ocean Boulevard, tax map 99, lot 11. The only provision of the deed from the town for which relief is requested are the seven foot restrictions, a restriction in paragraph 4 to allow two unit to allow units 2, 8, and 9, including their decks and the existing utility panels, to remain at their current locations and allow the subdivision of the lot A large house from the end from the end to include to allow the subdivision of the lot foundations 
are 6.42, 6.52, 5.14 feet distances from the property lines, and in some cases the decks are even closer. Both the units and the decks are shown on the site plan, and lot A is shown on the subdivision plan. There are no neighboring buildings close enough to be affected by this as shown on the plan. The encroachments onto town property are proposed to be removed. Do you have uh, anything on this, Mark, or do you want to go right to Peter? Uh, well, Peter has the explanation. There was no uh, appearance at prior uh, hearings, so Peter is here. There is there is one additional uh, change we need to make, and that's that Unit 9, which does not encroach on town property, but does encroach on the state property. Uh, we reached an agreement to move that off state property somewhere within this a particular complex. Um, that would have to be a condition of any approval, I, I would think. And uh, that would be uh, something, uh, an application, an amended application is going to be made to the planning board right. that will show the existing condition of encroachment on state property, but then will show the plan to be approved by the planning board showing that unit having been moved off state property so that the planning board will not be taking jurisdiction of state property. And uh, as I understand it, uh, a bonding requirement will be imposed to ensure that the removal occurs subsequently. Did I get that right, Peter? You got it. Okay. Sir, do you have a motion for I that? I do. I Please. do. It's a little bit longer because it does incorporate okay. a condition relating to the situation Peter just mentioned. Um, the motion would be, I hereby move to modify the deed restriction that now reads, quote, the grantee will not erect any buildings upon the premises within seven feet of any boundary line, nor shall the premises be subdivided, close quote, and to replace same with the following, colon, quote, the grantee will not erect any buildings upon the premises within the setbacks prescribed in the Hampton Zoning Ordinance, except to the extent allowed by the Hampton Zoning Board of Adjustment by variance once said variance becomes final, um, close quote. Contingent upon number one, the applicants receiving planning board approval of new amended condominium uh, <coughs> slash subdivision plans that show the unit that encroaches onto the Ocean Boulevard right of way having been removed from state property to the posting of a bond sufficient to cover the cost of removal of said unit in an amount approved by the Board of Selectmen. And three, no recording of the deed restriction modification document shall occur until these new Planning Board approved plans are recorded. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? In favor? All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. I uh, just want to extend my thanks for Mark on this one. This has been a long process, and he's been a, a great help in getting us to the point we're at now, finally. Not quite at the, quite at the end yet, but we're getting awfully close. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Okay, new business, post-deliberative session. I guess what we're going to do is go over the... The, our recommendations because so many people were not here at certain times when we voted on recommending these uh, different Warren articles and the one that was changed at the deliberative session. Right. So right. why don't we start with uh, seven. number seven. Which is the bond. Which was the bond, which was changed to 11 million seven hundred and eighty. So, so moved. we want to make a motion. We all voted it. Court, didn't we? No, it was four zero zero. Okay, so okay. moved. Rick wasn't here. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we. Right, just for oh, point of clarification: Should we re-vote or just the person <coughs> who didn't vote? I think because the amount was changed. We re-vote. Oh. Tell me, you'll okay. need a, a re-vote as to what your recommendation okay. is. Okay, so we have a motion. Sure. I'll second. Second it. All in favor of recommending this? Unanimous. Five zero. Article eight. We had three zero. And that was the operating budget for a total of twenty-seven million two hundred and twenty-five thousand three hundred twelve. And if it's defeated, the default budget of twenty-six million eight hundred forty-two thousand three hundred twelve. Oh. And there was two people who were not here. Mm -hmm. Rick and I. So it's just the, if those two just want to indicate what their recommendation okay. would be. Okay. I agree. I agree. Okay, so it's five zero. 
Yes. Article 9 was 5-0. Okay. Article 10. Article 10 was 4-0, and that was uh, that's the... So okay, I'll that's you? I'll go for that one. Okay. Article 11 was 4-0. And I'll go for that one. Okay. Article 12 was 4-0. And I'll go for that one. Article 13 was 4-0. That was the new trash trucks, the least purchase. Were you away for that? Yeah, okay. I'll go for that one. Okay. Article 18 was 4-0. That's I'll the... I'll go for that one. That's 5-0. <clears throat> Article 24, 24 was 4-0. Appropriate and read the sum of 50. I'll go for that one. Okay. Article 26 was 4-0. I'll go for that one. Article 27 I'll was... I'll go for that one. Article 28. I'll go for that one. Article 31. I'll go for that one. Article uh, 34. Kino. I'll go for that one. Did I miss my papers here somehow? No, I'm going through the, with you. The next one is Article. Oh, uh, uh, actually, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think Article 29 had a change in the amount at the town, at the deliberative session. That the okay, that was yes. marked here, yes. Yeah. All right, so it was changed from 20000 to 40000 40, That's correct. All right, it was recommended initially 5 0 by the selectmen. I'll recommend it again. Okay. I'll second it. All in favor? I'm against it. Okay. I'm against Four. it too, I'm sorry, so it's 3 2. Three, two, zero. Okay. All right. And <clears throat> what I'm, uh, which one is it? Uh, you did 31. You did 34. Uh, the next one that was uneven was. The record, the 301, and I, I don't have the There's number that it was. That was the town forest one. Town forest is article 37. number 37. 37. Okay, Article 37. It was voted 301. And that was for the the changing the bylaws. And that was a pretty lengthy one. Yeah, right. I'm for it. Okay, were well, you the only one that w wasn't here, I guess? Yeah, so you're yeah, for it. So it would be 401. 401, okay. Okay, and 38. Oh, that's a citizen petition, so we... Well... It has a it has an appropriate. Oh yeah, because that's the no. deed one. Yeah, that was the deed one. And we said it was with the not recommended zero three zero. Yeah, because we said it wasn't in our wheelhouse. We said yeah. we didn't want to be involved in it. Okay. What is that? For? That is, upon petition of at least twenty five legal voters of the town of Hampton, New Hampshire, to see if the town will vote to modify all fence height restrictions in deeds for former town lease lands to allow fences to be a maximum of four feet high matching the height of trash and recycling bins distributed by the town and required for town collection. Majority vote required. Not recommended by the selectmen, 030. May I say something Yes, you may. Um, Mr. Griffin, the uh, selectmen have, as you know, because we've done three of them tonight, the, a process on an individual basis for modifying deed restrictions, taking into account individual circumstances. And once uh, a vote is taken by the board, something is recorded in the registry referring to that specific property. This blanket article would make for a very cumbersome, if, if, if possible at all, ability to go back and amend unnamed deeds. And uh, as I believe uh, you may have pointed out uh, to the, the three-foot uh, height that was ornamental fence specified um, had more to do with just trash, uh, hiding trash barrels. It had to do with view in some cases, so that the board would 
perhaps want to take individual circumstances into account rather than just putting in a blanket four-foot high restriction. Uh, so there are practical considerations, but also um, if we were to go back in the registry and name all 600 plus lots, it would be a, a, an almost impossible task because you'd have to search each one to see who the current owner is and uh, it would be very cumbersome. But would we have to log the, same log the same one for everything or could we just put a blanket statement in there saying that we changed that? Uh, I, I know Taki got up and talked about it the other day. Yeah. You, you made some good points. You, you could record the vote without <coughs> reference to any particular lot, but if you were doing a title search, you wouldn't pick it up. That's the thing. Because in, ma in many cases, you see that the lots were mostly deeded in the 80s and have changed hands. And uh, the registry without a reference would have no way of uh, indexing it so that someone would know this as it had occurred. <coughs> I like to abstain. And I want to abstain too. Okay, so what we have is 032. Zero, three, two. Zero, Good? Okay, now the next one's a lengthy one. I'm not going to read it. That's Article 39, which was upon the about the noise or, uh, ordinance, entertainment activities. And the vote on that was 021. I, I guess Rick and Regina were not here, I don't think. Yeah, I'm abstaining. You're abstaining, so, yeah, so zero I'm two two. Against it. You're against. Yeah, I so can't believe it. Zero We're three two. Okay. All right, that's correct. Now yep. we did not. Yes, we did. Article forty, you did. Article forty. Again, it was a noise ordinance. Uh, it's the abbreviated one. The abbreviated one, and the recommend. It was not recommended by the board of selectmen. Zero two one. Abstain. Abstain, so zero two two. I'm against it. Zero which is the one about the which is the one about that has uh, uh, that they don't want to have a license. That's the one you just voted on a minute ago. Thirty nine. Uh, because I've, that does nothing but take people's rights away that want to um, complain. I mean, I think that's ridiculous. Okay, zero that's three. The worst thing I've ever seen put on a, on the ballot. Zero three ever. two. Zero three two. Okay. And then we had the Christmas parade. Three thousand. Another one that's pretty bad too. Myself. We'll Christmas. To it. Christmas parade. Yeah, that was zero. That was that's three, three zero, zero zero. Anybody else? You weren't here. I don't think Regina for the Christmas I'll parade. Oh yes, for that parade. Rick, you weren't here for the Christmas I'll parade. For it. Okay, so that's five, five zero, zero zero. And then we had Article forty two. Uh the, the uh appropriation for the mill. The mill dam. Dam, one hundred thousand dollars. It was recommended by the selectman three zero zero. I'll vote for it. Me too. So it's five zero zero. Okay. And then they had the uh Tell the town of Hampton vote and raise appropriate the sum of five hundred twenty thousand for the construction of the American with Disabilities Act ADA, the sidewalk up on May Street, and that was three zero zero. I'll vote for it. I'll vote for it also. Okay, five zero zero. I just want to point out that that's how Hampton takes care of their sidewalks, like what's not happening uh, down. At the beach for years, I can't believe every time I pull out of my driveway that I have to look to see how awful. And I pay taxes, and I have nothing but potholes. What's supposed to be a sidewalk? Yep, it's terrible. And I see people with baby carriages in the fast lane of the traffic all summer long, trying to get their baby carriages around. It's crazy. Article forty-six was uh, about the removing the trees. In the cemetery, and that was voted zero zero three, so it was three abstentions, and that and that was we had the same one article two years ago, was it? It was two years ago. It was for fifty thousand dollars, but the money came out of the, the uh, cemetery fund. This year, they want to take it from taxation. Right. It, they it, did not do the work two years ago. They canceled it. Right. It was it was appropriated. Right. They didn't do it. They didn't do it. And when, so it went back to the. Uh, to the fund. Yeah, so it's zero, zero, 003. I'll vote no. Is what the zero, zero, 004. 
So why does it say zero? So is no, no Basically, you abstained. You abstained. We abstained. Oh, we, I want to abstain. Well, she, she I want to no. abstain. Yeah, yeah. I want to um, do what the rest of the board did. Yeah, okay. I'll go with the board. Okay. Also. Okay, so zero, zero, 005. <coughs> We undersigned residents Hampton 49 petition the town to place on the warrant and request the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 5,100 to support One Sky Community Services. And that's the one that it was changed. changed he came back right. at the deliberative session and changed it to $5,100 due okay. to the fact that some of it was being funded from a different source. Right. Okay. The motion to uh, support that. Okay. Second. Okay, all, all in favor? 5 0. Okay. All right, I think that's, that's it. it. That's it, boss. Um, Anything oh. else on the on the delivery session? Yeah. I have a question. Um, if citizens found out about a petition that directly affects them, yes, by watching the deliberative tapes, Mr. Town Manager, if they have uh, strong concerns about how it's going to affect their neighborhood, I've told them to send something into the town manager's office so that maybe we can figure out what's going on. Well, they can, but because it's a petition that's been before town meeting, town meeting has acted on it and now placed it on the ballot. It can't be removed. I understand that, but if they have questions about it, could perhaps the questions get answered because they don't understand where the petition is coming from? Well, we can, if we can answer the question. It depends on what it is, yeah. Right. We try to answer it. And if they're it against it, position? they should come and speak at public comment. Absolutely. Right. right. Is it a citizen petition? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rusty? Mr. Griffin? Um, well, if, yeah. Anything else on post delivery? Yeah. You know, they should definitely come and talk uh, at public comment. And if they, it depends how strongly they feel about it. That's what people Very do. strongly. They're not they sure why they weren't asked to sign the petition since it's happening right across the street from them. They should come. They should be, you know, a lot of people would uh, be there on voting day uh, getting a group of people standing there and uh, being against it. They need to fight it, whatever okay. it is. Yeah, if they're not in favor of it, they either express their opinion at the time the polls are open. Hopefully it's a good day. Good? Yeah. Mr. Bean? Yeah, I would just uh, uh, like to compliment uh, the moderator, um, Attorney Kasasa, and what a fabulous job uh, he always does, and he did it again on uh, Saturday. A remarkable, remarkable performance and a remarkable uh, capability. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to uh, I'll ditto that. <clears throat> and also, he was very sharp because he made sure that we took a lunch break so that the kids from the academy could get the money <laughs> from the, uh, selling the stuff, which was really good. <clears throat> it was nice that Mr. Bean won the candle, too. Yeah, and, yeah. And promptly donated to um, a selectman that yeah, was so not I Mr. Bridal. I gave it to someone whose birthday it was. <laughs> you. <-hoo. laughs> <laughs> okay, on to new business Major two. Rounds. I know. <laughs> Drakeside Road, Hawthorne Landing, condominium bond reduction, Reduced to 10%, 70,403 to 7,040.30. <clears throat> Reason? It's been approved by Public Works. The material has been, in fact, put in place, and it has passed inspection. I'll okay. make that motion. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, before we have closing comments, I think we... Yes, if the, uh, bo if the uh, board would entertain a motion to go into a non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon 3 Roman 2 small a small c and small e uh, personnel reputation and uh, litigation and, and before we do that mr. chairman and pardon me Esquire is uh, we, we did have citizens in here and there was a couple of things I didn't want to um, jam up the meeting it'll, ju it'll just be very briefly but significantly if, if that's permissible yeah. um, mr. Welch could you extrapolate per, uh, briefly on the the aquarium meeting that was here this morning uh, particularly the graph that showed those extraordinarily high limits for new uh, new emerging threat I didn't uh, happen to bring them with me, but uh, we mm -hmm. met with Aquarian Water Company this morning, as we do. Uh, we have been doing approximately once a month, except during the Christmas holiday, uh, to explore the uh, PFC uh, contamination in various wells in, around the, the, uh, the system. Uh, there are two wells that are currently shut down. Number, I believe it's number nine, or no, number six. Uh, which in fact has uh, PFC contamination that's worrying 
the company and uh, well number 14 for other reasons. Uh, they have some um, other types of contamination of the well that they're studying to see whether or not it's harmful to anyone. Uh, <clears throat> the, the problems we have are we don't know where the material is coming from. Uh, they discussed putting in a treatment plant, uh, which is uh, somewhere in the six to seven million dollar range to build. Um, and they, they went over the, um, their plans to try to reduce the PFCs within the water system by building this treatment plant, which is currently undergoing appeals in Northampton. Uh, they, Northampton has approved it, but there is an abutter who is appealing the installation of the, of the, uh, of the facility and the placement of the pipes. We also talked about well number 22 and what's going on with well number 22, and they're still working on trying to put together a test uh, pumping of the well, which could be up to 1,350,000 gallons a day. Well, it's over a uh, 17 or 20 day period, uh, so the test can be checked on. Um, they're still trying to formulate that and put it together, and we have structured uh, another meeting coming up in approximately 45 days uh, so that we can continue to explore those things. They are working on various things to try to uh, find out where the contamination is coming from. They have a number of, and been working with DES in, in Concord, a number of private wells in Northampton and Hampton. Uh, I believe there was 140 of them that they have sent letters to that are, they're requesting uh, give to give uh, uh, DES and Aquarion permission to, in fact, come and test the wells and, and record data on those wells so that they can put the picture together on what's happening in the general area of the, the, uh, the pumping systems and wells that are, that are owned by Aquarion. Uh, they've only received less than 50 approvals. They would like to have the balance done which is of no cost to anyone, but it will help us identify where contamination may be or may not be. So it'll centralize their, their task and centralize what they're doing. That is an important function, and they're going to send the town copies of uh, all of the locations that letters have been sent to, and we will, uh, with the board's permission, uh, when we receive that information, send a letter, additional letters out to those people to see if they can't participate in the testing. Uh, which costs them nothing, but in <coughs> fact may, may help the situation with Aquarion and the, and the drinking water wells. In a nutshell, that's kind of where we are. Um, they're working hard to try to identify problems and resolve them. Uh, they need the help of various people in the community for the testing, and uh, they've asked us to give them a hand in that area. I think that's kind of a fair synopsis of what Thank we you. did. Thank you very much. Here's well 14. Uh, they're right next to well number six. Uh, uh, it's a <laughs> little distance away. Little distance away. But it's in the general Hampton. general area. Northampton. It's All right, in Northampton. So Close yeah, to and the other one. concern we have is it's going to be summer before we know it, and we don't have well six. We don't have right. well fourteen for whatever reason that is. And what's going to happen when we do need another well? Whether they can get there was a question as to whether or not they might be able to get well twenty two. Up in testing before the summer season hits. It's going to depend upon a number of different variables that they have yet to approve with the state. Right, but then if not, we're looking at possibly turning wells back on that have these high levels of PFCs that no one knows anything about, and the EPA is saying it's not a big deal, and DES is you know helping Aquarian out, but Aquarian as a private company has led the raid. But there's only so much they can do, and it really needs to. Uh, I think Eversource might need to step in sometime soon since they're a huge utility corporation and it's going to cost six million dollars to clean the wells for the aquarium population never mind the rest of the seacoast and the rest of the state so I mean maybe it's time that they start getting on board I just talked to representative Mesmer this afternoon and DES and EPA hasn't even asked aquarium for any of their test work so We'll That's pretty that lame, if you ask me. Also, added that uh, the prairie indicated that uh, without some satisfactory approvals, well number six will not go back on, and there may be severe restrictions in the summertime. That's a major production well. Uh, it needs to be back on to meet their quotas, uh, and there may be massive uh, problems if they don't put it on, but will result in uh, some curtailment of watering, particularly outdoor usage altogether. So. 
We're looking to see what's going to happen with that and how they're going to try to structure that and what the result is going to be. Obviously, we have a nice rainy summer. We're not going to need an awful lot of outdoor watering, but uh, they're cautious. They're, they're not going to predict that, and um, they're concerned that uh, they, if we had the same situation we had a year and a half ago uh, with uh, one well being down, uh, we almost came to the point where we didn't have enough water to supply the three towns. That's a dangerous situation. Yeah, I would say this, and it, and it ties in, Mr. Chairman, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Um, with the letter that we sent to uh, the Portsmouth City Council, and I, I hand-delivered that um, today to the Portsmouth City Council office, um, and, and uh, speaking with it, Carl uh, from Aquarian said today that uh, if this happened again, that there would be uh, restrictions on water use uh, in the summer. Uh, and Dr. Ballastaro had an attachment that uh, Mr. Gerald put together so uh, so uh, ably, uh, and it speaks specifically. And Portsmouth never responds to this, and this is their problem that they've created for us. This past summer, a public water supplier, Aquarian, had one of its major wells, Well 6, shut down to PFC contamination. The supplier provides drinking water to Hampton, Northampton, and Rye. The well that has been lost produced just over 65 million gallons per year. This is an overburdened well. Nearby, there were four other Aquarian wells, some bedrock, and remember that word bedrock, we're going to come back to it, that combined to pump an additional 200 million gallons per year. The Coakley landfill studies have clearly demonstrated that there is an intimate connection between overburden and bedrock groundwater. The combined draw from these wells is manifested in the USGS modeling study results. Further on in, in the uh, memo uh, from Mr. Ballastaro, Dr. Ballastaro, that Mark has put together, says the initial regulatory response to this request is that the Coakley landfill is not the source of PFCs that shut down the well. Mr. Ballastero further states, yet all of the groundwater data that exists argues against this simplistic conclusion. Dr. Ballastero, in interestingly enough, uh, was the professor to the head of the EPA that now leads the area when we, uh, when we met in Northampton. So we've talked about bedrock and then in the own the the Coakley landfill management uh, of migration OU2 from 1994 portions of that landfill lie directly on fractured bedrock so we've got a couple hundred million gallons right around that one well that uh, um, are at risk we've got fractured bedrock where contaminants are and uh, up at the Seacoast Cluster Cancer uh, Investigation Commission, at the last meeting, Department of Environmental Services wasn't there. Health and Human Services wasn't there. Coakley sent a uh, lobbyist, and uh, there was nobody from Aquarian, and there was nobody from Eversource. And uh, they need to be driven to the table, and they need to be driven uh, more uh, energetically uh, by this town that is, that is so uh, hugely at risk. Uh, for this situation, and I, I really don't know how uh, the Portsmouth City Council sleeps at night. There are two uh, pediatric cancer deaths. Uh, this is their problem that they cannot disprove. Uh, we have hundreds of millions of gallons of water at risk, and they act as though they don't even know us. Uh, so I commend uh, you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for your leadership on this, and, and Mr. Gerald and Mr. Welch in sending this letter over. Uh, and it, it signifies, in, in terms of this meeting today, that this uh, GAC and this gravity-activated carbon remediation process, this, this process will cost $6 million for this town to eliminate uh, this threat. And uh, we're, we're dragging on it. $6 million, uh, our discussions with Eversource and Aquarian this morning, and I didn't speak for the board, Mr. Chairman, but is, if this is Portsmouth and Coakley's problem, then I would think the town of Hampton would make sure that Portsmouth pays for it. Uh, and it shouldn't come out of Eversource or Aquarian uh, shareholder wealth. It shouldn't come out of Hampton taxpayers, and it shouldn't come out of Hampton ratepayers for Aquarian. When we looked at the graphs that were, were brought to the table today, and I would ask that they be posted on line all of that information uh, without objection mr. chairman um, there are merging PFC or contaminants and it was up and I, I don't have them with me unfortunately um, but it's over over a hundred I believe one of them is yeah. over a hundred and that that is in, yeah. in yeah. yeah and uh, these are new emerging contaminants and the public doesn't know this and uh, Portsmouth uh, isn't doing anything about it and if you could just read that second page I believe it is um, Selectman, there's the limits. It shows it over a hundred. 
Yeah, there's something here that shows. I believe on that second page. Hold on. So it's on the bar graph. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. You got it. That second page. The next one over, third page. Fourth page. That right oh, there. Oh yeah, right here over 120. There, up to 100, 140. Uh, at that well. Is that what, what well is that? That's well six. Well six, which is our largest well, is now, and they're talking about making a what I call a cancer cocktail and blending that, bringing that online to meet demand. And with those limits, and I would like Max to take a picture of that, um, they're, they're talking about blending that. And they think that's a solution. So this is, uh, I think, Hampton's biggest challenge right now. Uh, and it goes to the, the heart of the issue with the attorney's letter uh, to Portsmouth with the attachment and Dr. Bellistero. And then finally, I just wanted to share that um, the Port Coakley Landfill Group and the Portsmouth City Council lets this, this rogue unit um, act this way. Um, they fought with a lobbyist about uh, right to know and don't want to disclose any information. They don't make any accounting for their money. They, they are unanswerable to anybody. There are children dying. We have almost 140 PFC, PFOA count with that, with that information. These are emerging contaminates, and, and this is actually an emergency and a dire uh, situation. We're not allowed to talk about it. And no one's allowed to talk about it. The governor has not been down here. And uh, I think this, this town, town manager, Mr. Chairman, uh, or you, needs to call the governor, and he needs to get down here. Uh, this is his state. This is his water supply. This is $200 million of revenue that comes out of this town, and he has done absolutely nothing on it, and he's remained silent on it. And I would, uh, without objection, uh, ask that uh, the town manager call up to the governor's office and have uh, him meet, perhaps with you, Mr. Chairman, Aquarian at Eversource. Uh, but when you look at that graph, it is hugely problematic. We have people stymieing right to know. We have dead children. Uh, and I, I just wanted to bring that up because it is the most exigent and most serious issue that this town is facing right now, or perhaps has faced in a long time, period. So thank you for the time on that, Mr. Chairman. It is very important, and I wanted to thank uh, Fred um, and Aquarian and Eversource for coming, and uh, the Selectman Barnes for really driving this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, all of their graphs and stuff is on their website now? should be up on their website. It's and going to be up on our website. Okay, on our website, right. and, and we have a link to it. And should we have them yeah. in for a public meeting to explain the, the problems that could come up in the summer? We've asked them to do that immediately after the new board is in panel. Okay. It's because we, we don't have to do this twice. We need right. to do it once. Okay. Uh, and, and they've agreed to do that. Okay, good. All right, so. Um, oh, you yes. made that motion already? Uh, <laughs> we'll try it again if you want. All right, go. A motion. Uh, <laughs> I'd ask that the board uh, make a motion to enter into a non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon 3 Roman 2 small a uh, personnel small c reputation and small e uh, litigation. Okay. A roll call. Regina. Aye. Aye. Rusty. Phil. Rick. Myself. Yes. Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you, Channel 22. Thank you, gentlemen.